After we lay out the hip in its entirety, we have to take the deduction and this, mark out the setbacks of each of the rafters at the peak and consider the height above plate line for the hips. Now, I'll start out with the deduction of the rafters. You can see this here. This is plan view of all of the rafters stacked at the peak. You, you have the first two hip uh, common rafters that run into each other, no deduction. Second two commons butt into those at 90 degrees. They have half the thickness of the common rafter deduction, which is three quarters of an inch. Then you have four more common rafters that die into those. They have double cheek cuts and they have a half the 45 thickness of a common rafter two by deduction, which is an inch and 16th for each one of them. And then finally you have eight different hips and they have these 67 and a half degree angle cuts and they have a deduction of two and an eighth of an inch. And we have to think in terms of not just the deduction, but the setback. So we, this is where our, the point has to be, but we have to set back down here with our saw when we run it so that our saw blade comes out at the peak in each one of these. So in this case, I have it drawn out. You can see I have a center line for the hip here, running along here, and I have a line drawn for what's called the uh, setback. This will be the deduction. This is the setback. I've transferred this out to the side of the rafter and down plumb. This is in plan view, so everything's done at a 90 degrees to the plumb cut. All the setbacks and deductions are done at a 90 degrees to the plumb cut to keep it in plan view. And that goes with the steel square method and all other methods. So I had to draw a line down the side of the rafter, set up my saw, in this case, 67 and a half degrees, and cut these, all of these, rack them all up, mark them all out, cut each one of them. Now, the hip, this part is a little bit complicated, only in that it's slightly difficult to explain. But there's something called an inclined plane, which is basically the plane of the tops of the spines of the rafters. And with a common rafter, it's pretty straightforward. It's like the plywood that runs ac across the back of the common rafter. Your, 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 your rafter can't be twisted underneath the plywood or you won't go get full purchase of the plywood. So that's one of the characteristics of a common rafter is that it gets full purchase in the plywood behind it, along the spine of it. But a hip is a little different and a valley. The hip turns like this. So if you imagine, this is the common, of a common rafter would be like this. When you eye it across the top, you could see the side closest to you and the side furthest away from you. If it was a valley, it would turn towards you so you could see the center line. We're eyeing, remember. So if I'm like this and it's a common, I turn it like this and look, you can see the center line. That's a valley. You don't, you don't touch a valley. You either raise it and V it or you leave it alone. It's simple. You just turn it. But with a hip, when you calculate the length of the hip and you draw your, your hip length line where you're going to cut your notch right here, you have to think in terms of the height above the plate, where it is. Is it at the Rafter length line, or is it inboard? With the hip, it's always inboard. And here's why. When you turn the rafter away towards you, you see the center. When you turn it away from you, you can't, the center of the rafter, hip rafter is obscured. Now all hips are calculated to the center line. So if you can't see the center line, that means the wood is in the way. So you have a choice. Now you can either back the rafter or you can create a new line and notch it so that it'll set down a little bit lower. And it will, it'll, if you don't do that at the peak, it'll be a little high. If you bevel it, it'll be perfect. Or you can set it down so that the, the spine stays flat, but the corner lines up with the common rafters on either side of you, of it. So here's a block. And it may be hard for you to see, but this is the common rafter and you can see the height above plate line. It's three and a half inches above plate. 
Height above plate, heel stand is the same thing. So here, here's a two by four, three and a half inch block. The bottom lines up perfectly with the notch. The top lines up with the spine of the top of the rafter. Sheeting would be perfect. You could bevel this, you would bevel this on a 12-12 pitch, but this is an example of heights, right? Look at this. The length of the hip line is the outermost one where the notch is. If I were to set this right up against it, it's perfect. But when you look down on the top of the rafter, you can see in plan view where the corner of the building is, and clearly you can see that the corner of the building is inboard from the rafter length line. In this case, about 5 16 to 3 8 of an inch. You come down here. That's where the block has to run into in plan view, like that. And so if you see, if you look closely, you'll see it's, it's short of the top quite a bit. It's about, mm, looks about 3 8 of an inch from the top or more. So that would be your markation for to bevel it. Or you can remark the bottom or mark the bottom correct to begin with and cut it so this thing sits down lower. That's important. So what we have here is the deductions and setbacks for the top of the rafters and, and getting the proper height above plate lines down at the bottom. And that's kind of the battle. That is the battle of uh, stacking a hip roof correctly. It's not getting the lengths. You can get the lengths from a book. You can buy a rafter book. Figure out what your span is, look under the tables, and it'll tell you the length. It's how all of the wood goes together properly. What to remove, what to leave. Yeah.